Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts and today what I'm going to be doing is upcycling a jalapeno pepper jar and an old soup tin. What I need to make sure is this edge here, inside edge of this can is completely covered up because it's really sharp and I know that because I just cut myself with it. So what I'm going to do first is go round it like this with some masking tape all the way around. That'll help cover that sharp edge up to start with. And then I'm going to go around the whole can before I put the next layer on because that will give it, give my paper clay, which is what I'm going to cover this in, a much better surface to stick onto. Well, that's well adhered onto there. And then I'll give a second layer of this onto that as well, all the way around. And once I've put the paper clay on, you'll see that that'll be very well protected and that's not likely to cut anybody that's using it. I intend to turn this into like a dragon jar. So I want this dragon to be on the outside like that. I'm gonna turn it into some brick and then I'm gonna have something on the top. All I'm using here is my white paper clay that I made. And if you wanna know how to make that, the recipe is free on my website. For anyone to download and I do have a video on it as well which I'll link at the end of this one. And this silicon mold is great for this. And I made this clay probably about three months ago. I'm pushing it in quite firm so that I can get as many details on it as possible. I want it to be a little supple when I go to put it on the outside of the actual jar itself. Next thing I want to do is cover these all in some brown paper. Now the brown paper will stick onto this glass really well. All I need to do is pop it on like this. And it's quite warm here today so it's going to dry fairly quickly. If it didn't dry quickly then I would pop these into my resin curing companion by T Expert and as you've seen in my previous video that works really well for drying paper clay, paper mache and all this sort of thing. Cuts down on so much time. But really easy to do. I use this brush, it's the glue brush, to ensure that it's everywhere. I want to take it inside to just below that rim. This is the paper I get from Amazon packages and things. And I'm going to do exactly the same here on this one. And again, that will help a great deal with covering up that edge so it's not sharp at all. It's not going to be sharp or dangerous and cut anybody ever again, I hope. Well, these are dry now. Dry enough for me to be able to do what I want to do. And look at that. That is so much nicer. There's no way that is now going to cut anybody <laughs> or do any damage to anyone. I'm not going to put the paper clay onto that one, but I am going to put a little bit of paper clay onto this one. And I'll show you why in a second. I only want enough to go around the whole thing like this. And this is going to take probably a day to completely dry because I'm only putting a really thin layer on. But they've both got themes going on. And as you know, this one's gonna have a dragon put on it. I want this outside to look a bit like stone. That's completely covered. All I'm gonna do now is take my little bachelor and smooth this off, but I still want some texture in there, like you can see. So some holes and bits and pieces. And now I'm going to take the back of this knife and go round and put some blocks in it. So it looks like it's got bricks in it. And then all I need to do is go through it now like this. And that's going to make it look like it's a brick wall. And then when that dries, it'll dry with that pattern in. And that's why I wanted to keep the texture on there rather than have it completely smooth because it's more likely to look like stone then. And for the tin, I made some playing cards using this mold and my white clay in exactly the same way as I made the dragon. And I've left them so these are still a little bit soft. I'm going to glue these on the tin using PVA glue. And be careful with them at this stage because they are still soft soft. You want to wait until they've gone completely hard before you handle them a little bit more. And the reason I want them soft is so that I can push them onto here like that. I'm not looking 
for perfection on these. I haven't spaced them out very evenly, <laughs> look, but that's all right. I could live with that. Because it's too late now to take them off because I wouldn't be able to get them off because that glue will have nearly dried. What I'll do is I will leave this now to completely dry so the paper clay can dry and then I'm going to paint it. Well, these are both dry now. It only took about two days for these to dry, which wasn't too bad. I had them in a really warm place. Now, before I put the dragon on this one, which is here, still quite soft because I covered that up with some cling film plastic wrap so it didn't dry out really quickly because I want to curve that around here. And this one I'm going to give the effect of being a wall and that's really easy to do. All I'm going to do is mix up some grey, some fairly dark grey to start with using a bit of black and white and paint the whole thing over with that. And this is why I left it really quite rough looking because once this is painted over, you are really going to start to see, especially when I put some of the other bits of detail on here, the texture. And it's gonna make it look a lot more like stone. Now I'm not too worried if I leave a one or two little white spaces in this. What I wanna make sure is all these bits inside where the mortar would be for the bricks are completely covered. That's all painted now. And before I do the next stage, I'm going to leave that to dry. And and this one I'm going to paint over in a red that I'm also going to add a little bit of burnt umber to just to give it a bit of a darker and less bright red colour and again that is lovely and secure now that isn't going to go anywhere and it's not going to cut anybody either which is really important. These are both dry now what I'm going to do is dry brush over the top of this one a much lighter grey and I'm using a coarser brush to do that with I want to get quite a bit of paint into my brush first and then knock it all off onto a piece of cloth and then go over it like that. And what that'll do is bring out some highlights on this brick. I'm going to be quite heavy handed with these ones. I want them to be quite a lot on here and I should go all the way around because I should put some other highlights on this as I go. I'm going to add a little bit more white to this grey, lighten it up again and then go over the whole thing again. And then the next colour I'm going to use is the brilliant white and do exactly the same. There's one more thing I want to do to this before I stick the dragon on. Got some sap green here and some phthalo green. I'm going to mix that together and then with a sponge, I've knocked quite a lot of it off. I'm going to go around heavier in some places than others. And then the very last thing before I put the dragon on, tiny bit of the very bright sap green. Not too much. I don't want that to be the dominant colour, but that would look like a few highlights on it. I'm really pleased with how that's coming out. And then with this can, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm doing a colour wash. I'm going to make it very runny to start with. And this is a really bright red. Pop that all over it like that. And leave it on for a few seconds and get a cloth and take it off. I'm going to put some burnt sienna into that. Mix it up and then do the same thing again. And now I'm going to let that dry. This is really quite soft now, but this is dry and I need this to be soft because I need to be able to wrap it around the actual glass jar or the, or the rock now that I've created. I want to take this out very gently because I don't want to damage it or ruin any of the detail that are on it. I'm squeezing this out, as you can see, really gently. Letting gravity do its thing. Thing. I'm going to be using some wood glue or PVA glue to glue this on with. All these little fray bits around the edge, once it's all dried up completely, I'll be able to take those off and I'll show you how I'll trim those off without doing any damage. And then I've got something special to show you at the end. Oh, I do get excited about my crafting. Let me know in the comments, because this white clay now has been out a while, probably about three months since I made this recipe. Let me know if you've made it, or if you've used it, and if you have, if you like it, because I love it. I've got to make some more now, because I've run out. Now, to get this to dry up a lot quicker, I'm probably going to lay this in my curing machine, as, I, as you saw in a previous video, where I tested out whether it would cure up 
nicely in there and it really did. I'm gonna keep it on my hand. I want this to be oh, perfect, perfect positioning. Bend that round like that, making sure it's contacted everywhere without pushing too hard on it. That will now glue on there really well. I'm gonna leave it flat like this and then pop it in propped up in my curing machine and that'll cure that really quickly, allowing me to get onto the next stage. Well, this is all dry now completely and I'm ready to paint it. And what I'm going to do is paint around it with some gold, some bronze, some brass. I cleaned all this up. All I did was went round it with a sharp knife and cut into it because once it's dry it cuts off really easily wherever there's any bits that you want and this is completely dry now. Now I've painted this gold I really like the gold look against this brickwork but I do want it to be a bit more sparkly of course and a bit more metallic looking. What I'm going to do first is make myself some wax that's coloured. Now I don't need too much and I've got this wax here. This is beeswax. It works really well. And I'm using gold mica powder here inside that wax and then give it a really good mix in. Now I won't waste any of this. I keep little pots, especially for this. And these are the little pots I use. They come with things in like nail art and things like that. I never throw them out. I always keep them especially especially for these sorts of things. And then all I'll do is get some on my brush and now I can go over that and apply this wax. So what I'm gonna do now is carry on over this and then I'm gonna show you what my little surprise is. Well, that's those two finished. I'm really pleased with how they've come out. I love this distressed look on this. It's exactly what I was going for. I did lightly brush over some white. I'm so pleased with that. I also put a felt bottom on the bottom of this one. I thought that was important. And this now is really nice. Nice and smooth is not going to cut anybody and that could be used for a shaker keep money in lots of different things and then this one again that has come out really well I like the way that the stone has come out I'm really getting into painting this I'm no expert but I'm really enjoying it I've left the bottom clear on that one so that you can see into the jar and right the way through the jar. That's useful depending on what you want to do with it. I want to show you my surprise and this is the surprise. As you know, I got a 3D printer. Thank you to everyone that made that possible through buying me a coffee. I really do appreciate it. I've been printing like mad. I can't stop myself. This is a coin that I glued to this and these were free designs that come and I will link them in the description below. And this was two poker chips that I printed off and a dice that I've distressed a little bit, but I didn't want to do it the same colour. I didn't want it to try and be the same colour. And that's the lid that fits on there. A little bit of movement in that one. That one's quite nice and tight. So let me know in the comments what you think of those. And if you like them, if you've enjoyed this project and you want to start upcycling jars and tin cans rather than throwing them away, then it's easy to do. I will link the video now on how to make the paper clay. It's really easy and the recipe is free on my website. Please boot that like button and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and ring that little bell so you get notifications. All the links to everything that I've used, including the buy me a coffee one, are in the description below. Hope you've enjoyed these. Take care. Enjoy your crafting. Bye.